Good morning. Uh, here's a question from the assignment on chapter 10, that is rotational motion, that was quite difficult for students, and so I'm working it out here. You have a small sphere of radius 3 centimeters that is rolling without slipping. As you can see here on the track shown, it's rolling and the radius is given as 30 centimeters starts from here and then it's just shoots off from here so you got to find the the speed at which the the sphere leaves the surface and also the total distance that it travels along the x-axis now this angle is given as 135 degrees so the first thing that we do here is set up uh, right triangles, as you can see, just dropping a vertical line from there, and a horizontal here. And the idea is we're going to take this as the reference height, or the ground. We're going to take this as the ground, and therefore the height of the sphere is going to be just this much. That's going to be the height. Uh, thereby, it's going to have potential energy given by that height or defined by that height. And then we're also going to calculate this displacement because we'll need it finally uh, to find the total displacement along the x-axis. Okay, so from those triangles, which I am I'm labeling A, B, C, and D there, uh, if you look carefully at this right angle triangle, you can see that uh, AB by the radius is going to be cos 45. And uh, this distance, which is the opposite side, by the radius is going to be sine 45. So I'm going to take that. So that gives me AB as 0.19 meter. And doing the same thing, I, I've just called it CD, but uh, it's actually this, you know, that they're, they're equal. So, so you get AB and CD and then use the conservation of energy, where potential energy, MGH, at the top, uh, becomes the kinetic energy of rotation plus the kinetic energy of translation and uh, rotational kinetic energy is one half I omega squared and because it's a solid sphere you see that I is 2 by 5 mR squared that's rotational inertia and omega is a V by R and since it's omega squared that's why it's V squared by R squared so the R squares uh, get cancelled and uh, I'm multiplying throughout by 2 to get rid of this half here and this 2 by 5 is 0.4 and so you have a 1 plus 0.4 which is 1.4 and then you can get rid of the masses okay and uh, when you rearrange that and uh, just calculate plugging in the value for H. Remember H is AB which we had found out so it's uh, 0 0.19 and when you take the square root of that you get it as 1.63 meter per second that is the speed. Okay now to find the the distance we got to uh, resolve the speed or velocity rather into two components so you have 1.6 there this is going to be 1.6 cos 45 and this is 1.6 sine 45 and uh, to find the time it takes first we're going to use the vertical component that is 1.6 sine 45 we know that the height is going to be this much which we've already found Rather, you can find it uh, 
And uh, one thing that I did I forgot to mention, which was a very important point, is why am I using 0.27? I just completely missed out on that. That's because although the radius is 30 centimeters, the radius of the small sphere is 3 centimeters. So when you take the distance from the surface, it's only going to be 30 minus 3. That's the center. You know, when we always measure distance, we measure from the center. So although the sphere, the bottom of the sphere is, is touching the surface, uh, you see this uh, dotted line. That shows the path taken by the center. Do you see that? That's why you have 0.27. All right. Okay, so going back to what we're doing, therefore we know the height. We, can, we know the height. Uh, we know the initial vertical velocity, and you can uh, use kinematics uh, to find the time. So that's 1.63 cos. This is 1.63 sine. And uh, VOY, which is the vertical component. In fact, here the two components are equal because sine 45 and cos 45 are equal. Okay, it's 1.156 meter per second. Okay, here I should have paid attention to significant figures, which I did not. Anyway, delta Y is going to be negative 0 0.08, in fact, 0.08. And Y negative because it's going below where it started. You see, it starts from here and goes below so it's negative 0.08 although I missed putting a negative there you know it's negative there and then when we use the kinematic equation delta y is vit plus one half a t squared so you put the negative 0.08 is equal to 1.16 uh, it should have been t minus 4.9 because half times 9.8 is 4.9 so you put that you get a quadratic equation uh, which you rearrange and uh, solve when you solve the quadratic equation which I have not done here you get 0 0.29 seconds and now, knowing that the horizontal component of the velocity is a constant, which is V naught cos theta, you just multiply it with the time to give you that distance dE. So you get the distance dE as 0.335 meter. So now to get the total distance, you got to add... CD with DE and we know that CD is 0.19 meter therefore you add that to 0.335 again 0.34 would have been better okay so 0.52 meter so that is the total distance that you get just just consider this, uh, look at this, I've added the distances because they're asking you to find the total distance. So once we get DE, we got to add CD to that, alright? So that's the deal. I hope you understood this and thank you so much.